Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. Uh, this is a special mini pod version where we're mini-pod. doing the uh, mini pod. Yeah, we're doing a uh, movie review of Batman v Superman. Uh, because it's just big enough to talk about and give it its own little thing. So, uh, anyway, I'm Chris Atkinson, joined as always by Jeremy Scott, the voice Yo. of Cinema Sins, and Barrett Scher, writer of Music Video Sins. Hello. And, uh, Barrett, you ranted a little bit about this movie, uh, in our previous podcast. Yep. Um, since then, Jeremy and I both watched this movie, and I think. I think uh, sort of against our will, we just kind of watched this movie. Um, yeah, I had a, I asked a friend if he wanted to go to lunch, and he was like, "Well, I'm actually going to lunch with my son for his birthday, and then we're going to go see Batman. You should come with us." And I was like, eh. "He's like, come on." He basically twisted my arm. Yeah, and uh, and then when I saw Jeremy tweeting about it and everything, I was like, "Well." Damn it. I guess I'm going to have to watch this movie now. <laughs> and so I, I I picked a slot to go watch it. And um, and so, Jeremy, you did a 20-minute uh, movie review on your uh, personal channel and everything. Uh, just sort of get to the nuts and bolts of this movie. Yeah. I mean, just to boil it down to the biggest – I mean – there, there are good things, um, and and I want to eventually talk about the the Batman beatdown in the warehouse um, and Ben Affleck overall. But it's just a mess, and it's a mess because to me it feels like they're just trying to get from one comic book panel shot to another that looks pretty, and they do look really pretty. But what happens in between to get our characters into those shots is just nonsense, like two and a half hours of nonsense. Yeah, and I, you know, this. I'm. I mean, I, I'm sure we'll. I'm, I'll see some things that I missed in the first go around, or when we finally go around to sending this movie. But um, the I <laughs> does anybody know what to do with Lex Luthor anymore? No, the, no. the Lex Luthor is always doing something just stupid, and it's like, why is he? <laughs> The, why is he the main villain for Superman in these things? And and now he's going to take on both Superman and Batman? Huh. He's never shown himself to be clever enough to do any of this type of stuff. He's just rich, right? That's, is that his yeah. superpower? He's just like a rich asshole? Yeah, he's, he's rich. supposed to be really smart, too. Well, yeah, but in these in the last couple of incarnations from uh, from this one, obviously, in, in Spacey and in, uh, Superman Returns, like they're just rich assholes. They're, yeah, they're, they're rich smart. assholes, but they but and if they're supposed to be smart, I don't understand it because none of them have done anything smart. Uh, even the Gene Hackman version, of course, and I you can't find a be, uh, a more uh, dedicated Gene Hackman follower than I am. But uh, even when Gene Hackman was doing it, you're like, oh my god, he's just you know he's just a buffoon. Yeah, he is. And I don't know, I don't know if that's the way it was in the comic books. I never read the comic books, but uh, in this one, I never really understood. I guess Lex Luthor is so smart that he just figures out that Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent are Superman and Batman. Yeah, uh, I guess. But there's there's not anything really in there that says, aha, I know who these people are. I you think know? you're supposed to think that he knows from the get, right? Because when they're at that party now in that clip from the trailer where he's a, uh, where he slaps Superman. Oh, what a strong man. Do not pick a fight with this man. Right. Like, I, I think you're supposed to know at that point, he already knows what's up and I don't know how. Yeah. I don't either. <laughs> like I, everybody and, knows everybody's secret identity in this movie. And I tell you what, that would have been an exciting thing to watch in this movie for him to make that discovery somehow, some way, yeah. even yeah. if it is something like, you know, as stupid as, you know what? Clark Kent looks a lot like Superman. He seems to always be in the same place in the same time, blah, blah, blah. And then just said, okay, he's Superman. But Batman, <laughs> and how how would he have figured that out? That would have been a really interesting thing to figure out. Well, and we had the same robbery in uh, Dark Knight Rises with Bane. He just knows Batman as Bruce and says his name. It's not, oh, he's super smart. That's how he knows. Like, um, But anyway, let, I mean, can we talk about Superman and Clark Kent and the glasses and how... Even if that worked in the comics, we're making films here, and it is the silliest 
freaking shit to see that final newspaper opening shot with like Superman dead and then local reporter dead yeah. at the scene and he's just the oh, same fucking that, might, that was one of the dumbest things about the movie uh was that um uh because yeah that I mean if if there's anybody who is you would think especially in this day and age where you're talking about um, people on Reddit could solve the Boston bombings just by looking at pictures and stuff that, well, they, they solved would, it wrong, but yes. Yeah. But you know what I mean? They found yeah. the, they found people who were possibly in there and they, they ended up getting those people. But, but like, um, but like if, if, if you've got that type of society that can just solve simple puzzles like that, surely Superman. I mean, we're, we're treating the people in these movies re- like they're really stupid. Oh yeah. Uh, they, maybe they, they just can't. don't read print media. <laughs> maybe they don't. Maybe that's well, like, maybe that's the real comment about these movies. Nobody <laughs> reads is, newspapers. Bruce has to call Wayne Tower before anybody even evacuates, even though like, <laughs> Metropolis has been fucked up for several minutes now. Everybody's still yeah. working. Oh, that's Staring a hilarious scene, by the way. He calls and he and he's like, "Get out of the building!" and and the guy turns around and there's like all this damage and destruction going on around him and everything. Oh, you think so? <laughs> he's pretty much like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess we should do that." But he actually literally. <laughs> says everybody out of the building boss wants us out like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it's an order and not like safety yeah the other thing about this movie is how metropolis and gotham are basically san francisco and oakland yes. and i don't get that at all either um i understand that metropolis and gotham i mean they're they're both new york um right and i understand you have to sort of make a distinction i guess because it's essentially two different universes, even though it's the DC universe or whatever. Um, but that didn't make any sense to me either is that there, there's two huge metropolis cities, uh, right next to each other. You would think that that would just be all one thing, like a <laughs> metropogotham or, a <laughs> you know, Gotham. Well, can it, they also are in their own meteorological entities because Superman takes off from metropolis and it's perfectly calm and you know a, a breezy night and then batman's sitting there in this torrential rain waiting for him looking up into this like storm <laughs> that's pouring water onto his face yeah and he's looking across the bay at metropolis which is bone dry yeah exactly and uh and by the way that's another thing uh there's not any epic fight anymore that can happen without a huge torrential rainstorm coming down on it yeah uh it that it bothers me to uh, a serious point at this i, I really am di- i'm really am really tired of it at this yeah point. yeah well and do do we need to keep this spoiler free I don't think so. I could, we could just go ahead and warn people we're going to be talking. I mean, and I think that people who click on this and I've want to listen to a review have probably seen it. Uh, but, uh, let us, let's do the warning. Uh, I, mean, I already case. said Superman died and Clark Kent died. So, I mean, maybe we just warn in the text or the well, e- <laughs> even though, even though the very, very last frame basically says no. Yeah, um, it, there, there's there's some there's some presence in the ground. Well, and that's see. sort of part of the problem with this freaking movie, right? It's mm-hmm. like we're going to we're going to show you the death of Superman because it's iconic and, you know, Doomsday killed Superman in the comics. But we're going to rip it right away. Ten minutes later, even though we spent so much solemn moments after he died where they're lowering his body and everybody's oh, man. dead and it's overcast. And Bruce it's- Wayne at the funeral. And, you know, he's his best friend after like just reconciling with him. Yeah, like Bruce is like, I died. failed him in life. I won't <laughs> oh my God, death. dude. And don't even, I mean, you know, since we are in spoilers here at this point, uh, the, that whole reason for them being friends and everything is the dumbest thing I have ever <laughs> seen in a movie. I, I, I really, I don't think that being too hyperbolic, um, <laughs> they're fighting each other. They're beating the hell out of each other. And, and Superman says, I have to save Martha and <laughs> Batman go is like, Whoa, Martha. And just like you said in your review, Jeremy, like who, who calls their mom by their name, <laughs> especially in that situation. And then at the same time, 
has has Bruce Wayne slash Batman never heard the name Martha ever in his life other than his <laughs> See, mom? Like a parody video on YouTube, somebody like walking through an office, Bruce Wayne, like at a normal work day, and some secretary's name is Martha, and he got goes into a daze, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh and and yeah, he he hears the name Martha, and he's like, "Oh, well, we should be friends because our our mom's names were the same, right?" And and then and then it's like, "Oh, well, we know who the real enemy is here. Let's just go after Lex Luthor." Like, by the way, all the stuff leading up to the fight is stupid too. The uh, what Batman rigs up to try to kill Superman is the dumbest stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> um, he he puts in all this like you know like these guns and stuff. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill him with bullets, man. Uh, this is the you know. Apparently the best detective in the world. He doesn't know that he can't kill Superman with bullets. Um, and then, yeah, that that green mist kryptonite uh, nonsense uh, that he keeps spraying in Superman's face and all that. Um, it, the, the the you know the title card of this movie is is awful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's not forget the writer of this film ten years ago said that Batman versus Superman is where you go when you're out of ideas. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, I mean, it kind of shows, right? Like there's, I get the idea of cinematically putting Batman or at least two heroes against each other. But the, even though you've done it in the comics several times, the only way any fight between Batman and Superman makes sense is kryptonite. And that's symptomatic of the overall problem with Superman is that it, the only way you can have a fight is either somebody who's exactly like him, Zod, or kryptonite. It's just yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what, uh, about, what do you guys think about when they when they do finally team up together with Wonder Woman and everything? That seems to be what everybody points as the the highlight of the movie, right? Where everybody's working together. If we had gotten more of that, like it would have been arguably a much more successful movie, right? I guess. I mean, I liked the Wonder Woman stuff, but that that final fight is just a big orange and black CGI mess to me. Like I really literally got Fantastic Four shades watching that. Yeah. You, and once again, you have this big bad that they create, you know, and I, it took me a while to figure out what the hell happened with that. I, I still don't know how Lex Luthor, I, I may have missed the part where Lex Luthor figured out, I need to go down to the Antarctic and then cut my hand and sp sp uh, spray blood into Zod's body and put him in a pool. Yeah. And like, and where did he get <laughs> Zod's body e anyway? I, th I think previously we saw that he was in some sort of, I mean, maybe he was in Luther's. That was uh, a condition of the U S giving the government, giving them him what he wants. Okay. And giving them what they want. That's he something the, I completely body missed. Of, yeah. The full body of Zod and all that stuff. Yeah. So he but brings him right up. He doesn't have any idea what he's doing. They never show us no. any actual knowledge. He just, I mean, he does say to the computer, teach me or whatever. Yeah. But after wandering into a swamp. Yeah, it, it's so silly. It reminded me of that little Thor Ragnarok I was thing. Say that. Yeah, that was in, in Avengers Age of Ultron. It reminded me a lot of that um, yeah. because it just it seemed, it's just so, so out of place. Yeah, it really did. And, uh, and, and then, so yeah, his, his blood or whatever forms doomsday. And this is like, you know, this is comic book, uh, manna from heaven. People want to see doomsday. This guy gets 10 minutes of screen time well, and, he uh, looks like the bad guy from incredible Hulk. He does. He looks exactly mm. like that guy. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the, that whole fight, like you said, is a huge mess. And, and by the time we get back to it, because there's all that stupid bullshit with Amy Adams and the, and the, and the, the, what, the kryptonite skull or whatever, the, uh, they're throwing the, throwing the little spear down in the water. Like that's going to first, like that's going to even be, uh, a hiding place. And once the water <laughs> recedes, um, and then second off making it part of the plot because they have to jump back down into that stupid water to go get it. Um, <laughs> why does but, Superman have to be right up next to doomsday? Why couldn't he have been like five feet away and just super speared him in the heart? Right. Like the only reason Superman dies is because he flies right up to do it, you know, hand to hand style. Yeah, exactly. There was no point for that. Yeah. And, just uh, to kill Superman. but by the time it gets back to that point, you see that Wonder Woman's got her magic lasso around him and all this other stuff. I'm like, wow, she pulled that thing out. I don't remember her even using it the entire movie until that point where they just, they just happen to show her 
Uh, yeah, it was a random shot just out of nowhere. You know, oh, she she pulled it out and used it. They didn't even go for the orgasm moment where she pulls the whip out. <laughs> yeah. And uh and or the lasso or whatever. And um and so like uh, that didn't make any sense either, but yeah, it, it, you're right about the Fantastic Four thing because we don't see the villain in that movie until 15 minutes before the credits. And yeah. then, and then here it's the same thing. Um, because again, Lex Luthor is not really a great villain in this movie. And then they well, just, what's up with this final scene in the jail, like where Lex is in jail. And even though he's been branding people, the cops are just going to be like, Oh sure. Batman, we'll let you have a private moment in the cell with Lex. <laughs> like what the yeah. fuck was that? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Oh my God! It's like we just we just had a, a like I said in the review. I truly think this is the case that that they paid more attention to the storyboards than the script. Yeah, that's pro- that's probably about right. Oh, it was so frustrating. I love Batman. So can we talk about some good stuff? I was yeah. really impressed with Ben Affleck. Yeah, that seems mm-hmm. to be a, a prevailing sentiment about um, about the movie is that Affleck again. Uh, as always, because when people are always like, Oh, I can't stand this guy. He can't possibly be this person, whatever. Guess what? Always turns out to be okay and yeah. good. And I mean, I was, I went in not, I never thought of Affleck as like this awesome actor. I think he's good. He's probably above average, but I never expected. I, I don't agree with a lot of what they have Batman and Bruce Wayne do and his motivations, like his desire to kill Superman right off the bat. But mm-hmm. in terms of the performance, I thought, I mean, he made a great Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm, I'm excited to see this rumored standalone movie that he supposedly had already written a script for. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's uh, that's something that uh, I, if there's any positive out of this coming out, it would be Affleck making his own Batman movie. And then yeah, we can, I mean, you know, that's that's what I'm waiting for. I, I'm i disturbed. Yeah. Okay. He, he, I think it was just like the skinniest kid in fat camp though. Like, I, I don't think, <laughs> I think his, he was okay. He was okay, but he wasn't, is he the best Batman behind bail? No, no. Keaton is better than that. I don't know. I, I just think that his, he was, he stood out because he was good in a sea of really bad. Well, there may be some of that. There may be some yeah, of that. Yeah, and he was way better than what people gave him credit for. But yeah, you're right. I wouldn't put him above Bale or Keaton. Man, but, I might. I need to see more. But I but, thought he was great. But of course, Keaton's Keaton, the whole the Batman and Batman Returns have aged horribly. Yeah. Um. And and so Keaton's performance may not be as good anymore. Um. And Affleck's is a little bit better, but. Um, you know, I, I didn't think he was, yeah, I th- it was just, I think maybe possibly we're giving him a little bit more credit because we didn't expect much from him. No, I mean, I totally understand it. And, and, you know, he's got the look and he's got the charisma and he's got the, and I agree that the, with him, with the reins, we obviously see what he can do as a director and as a writer too. Uh, so I think, yeah, he could definitely make something a, a lot better. I'm just saying in this particular movie. I just don't think he really had that much to work with, except for a bunch of like dream sequences and hallucinations and shit. But in ultimately, yeah, man, the dream sequence thing, oh another horrible aspect of this movie. Um, uh, cause it's, it, they're just pointless. They just, they don't have, they don't draw me in. I'm just like, okay, this is a dream sequence. What are we going to see in this? That's going to make any difference at all in the movie. Yeah. That's, that's Jeremy's example of the storyboards and, and the, the comic book panels. You want to see Batman and his, uh, fucking duster, right. And right. looking through like binoculars and some weird shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and with goggles, even though he has a full fucking bat mask that he has stuff over his anyway. But as as Jeremy was talking about in his review, there is a there's a good Batman movie in here somewhere. I you know if they could have just sort of pushed Superman to the side, taken Lex Luthor out because the whole I mean look, Lex Luthor gets them to fight over just I mean it's it's just dumb yeah. you know, over something stupid like Batman's already pissed off at Superman. And everything and want and, and then it you know becomes a thing where Superman has to fight Batman because of, of his mom or whatever. Right. But uh it's not anything organic, which is what I feel like is the best uh way to get two characters like that to fight. Uh, it's and not some artificial Lex Luthor, you know, kidnap my mom subplot. As much as, you know, I've dogged Snyder's direction uh, over and over again in life. Um 
I do want to give props on that action scene when Batman takes on like two dozen guys in the warehouse and it's well yeah. lit and it's brutal and I know exactly what's going on and where almost everybody I need to know about is. And it just just like the trailer kind of promised, that that scene was balls. I loved it. Yeah, for, that's, a, that's a good one. It was the trailer sequence, wasn't it? It was. I just mean the trailers showed snippets of it and made me think, oh, the Batman action might be awesome in this. And that particular scene was awesome. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, like if you if you push aside the Superman stuff, that means you don't have so uh, you don't have very much Amy Adams uh, and Amy Adams, like you were talking about, Jeremy, was they just sort of put her in places where she can sort of, uh, you know, make the plot happen and everything. And uh, and I could have done without that, too. Yeah. Um, they well, could have made this a- movie. They could have made this movie an hour and a half, and yeah. and and made it more about you know, Batman is pissed off at Superman. Somehow Wonder Woman's involved in all this, and you, you know, get to lose all the Daily Planet scenes, the newspaper that operates on the editor's daily whim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're exactly right about that too. Like the whole like he's putting Clark on sports today. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they don't have anybody. I guess I guess the the you know sports writers are you know too busy uh, following a steroid story well, not or to something. Mention the the newspaper reading public absolutely would want to read about Batman branding people. And I don't even know how the movie can have Perry White take that editorial stance that they wouldn't. Yeah, you would think that Lawrence Fishburne probably at one point was like, why wouldn't this be a big story for this paper <laughs> <Exactly>. again? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I mean, and and, and yeah, the, we always, these, soup, these uh, newspaper editors or whatever, whether it's Spider-Man or if it's, uh, if it's Superman, they're always got one track minds and whatever, but but uh, Perry White isn't really like J. Jonah Jameson. He's he's more serious about stuff. I mean, he's not he's not a complete like. I mean, he's still kind of ridiculous, but uh, he he's not like J. Jonah Jameson. He would find a story that he'd you know that would be a story he'd want to write. You'd right. think. Oh my gosh. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you can't tell, none of us like this movie. Um, yeah. uh, there are good moments and I think it was a little bit better than I thought it was going to be, uh, yeah. just because I think I had that avalanche of horrible reviews beforehand. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's a good C for me. It's a C. Yeah. It's a C student. Well, and I read this morning, um, that it's on track to drop 80% from week one to two. Yeah, it actually already did. Uh, the Friday uh, gross was fifteen million. Which, of course, if you're any other movie in the world, you'd love to have fifteen million on a Friday on your second week. But right. this movie just made one hundred and seventy million. Uh, that you know over the week over its first weekend, and it dropped eighty percent. So now it's <laughs> yeah, now it's going to be lucky to make. Uh, it's going to be lucky to make three hundred. I don't think it'll make three hundred domestic. Yeah. Um, but it'll, it'll, Jeremy, I saw the uh, the tweet that you you had about uh, George Miller uh, replacing Zack Snyder. Man, I was so upset about that. I got it was an April Fool thing, wasn't it? It was, but it was like it was like five minutes to midnight when I when I found that story, <laughs> and it was like in in a feed. I didn't like go googling. I it looked like a new story at that. T- I just really didn't think that was. A, but yeah, oh, but yeah I was so I, good though. <laughs> it would be awesome if if George Miller took over. Uh, that franchise. I mean, or, how yeah. how amazing would that be? Uh, even if that is an April, even if that is an April Fool's joke, uh, what a great fantasy that is. Yeah, that's why it worked because it you know there's even been news stories about Miller almost directed you know Justice League ten years ago or whatever, and said it can perfectly make sense. And you know a lot of people don't want to see Snyder's vision continued down this path, but you know they've made more than enough money that you know money's not going to deter them from whatever decisions they make. By the way, one thing that I find telling about this is how Christopher Nolan's name has somehow not has somehow sort of slipped through on this. Like remember man of steel, uh, it was a big deal about like, yeah, the director of the Batman trilogy and everything. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Nolan is behind this and Zack Snyder's directing it. Uh, nothing, none of that here. He is no. a, he is an executive producer though on this yep. movie. Yep. Uh, and it, and you can kind of feel sort of a distancing there, um, where he's just like, all right, well, I'll put my name on it, but that doesn't mean I did anything on it. I hope nobody sees it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there we go. That's Batman v Superman. Um, uh, if you want to come back at us and say, this is the best movie ever made or, 
or we're giving it a uh, short shrift for some reason or whatever, go to SoundCloud and sound off on there and just tell us how much, how big of assholes we are. Um, but uh, that's it for our mini pod today. Uh, signing off on this is Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. Minipod! Minipod. <laughs> Minipod. Awkward. I could lob a few more insults at it and call it names, but I've said the meat of what I want to say. Right.